So this problem is a bit different than the other mathematical problems we've seen in the past few videos that had summations and equations. This is going to be more almost an algorithmic solution. So we're going to talk about, um, this is going to be, maybe you can think of this as more as a word problem. But this is a really important type of problem that is much more likely to occur than a strictly numerical or mathematical problem like before. So once again, as always, we want to remind ourselves of the method of mathematical induction. We want to show that some property is true for the first element in the sequence for our base case. And then we want to show that if P of K is true, or the property is true for some K, then P of K plus one is true. The property is true for the K plus one index. And again, we're going to suppose this part in our inductive hypothesis. And we're going to show this part. So you might have noticed that pennies aren't worth a whole lot anymore. It used to be that a penny could buy you something, but now people leave them on the streets, not even worth picking them up sometimes. Um, sometimes people suggest that we should even just get rid of them. So in this problem, we're going to talk about how we could get rid of all coins except for a three cent coin and an eight cent coin and we could still make any amount of change greater than or equal to at least 14 cents. So we would get rid of the penny, we'd get rid of the nickel, we'd get rid of the dime, we'd get rid of the quarter, and instead we'd just have an eight and a three cent coin and we could make any amount of change of at least 14 cents. Well, in today's world, we can never buy anything for less than 14 cents anyway practically, maybe a gumball in a gumball machine. But so, and then what we're going to do is we're going to use mathematical induction to prove that this is true, that we can do this. So as I said, this is, this is not numerical anymore, but this is more algorithmic. We have a problem we want to solve. We claim we can solve it. Let's prove that we can solve it. So we're going to do a proof by induction. Again, it's very important to write that out. Something we're going to use in this proof is we're going to use pictures. And that may seem surprising to you, but pictures are absolutely valid in proofs as long as they are concise and correct. Right? You can write words out, you can draw pictures, whatever it is that can get your point across. So our base case, well, let's think about this for a moment. Our base case is going to be wherever we start our sequence. Well, here we're not starting at one anymore. I'm not claiming that I can make one cent using only three and eight cent coins. Instead, I'm talking about using at least 14 cents. So we can make any amount 14 cents or greater. Right? This is going to be greater than or equal to 14. So 14 is going to be part the the start of our sequence here. Okay, so now we want to figure out how can we make 14 cents using only three and eight cent coins? Well, we can use, I could write this out in words, but it's more fun to draw, a three cent coin and a three cent coin and an eight cent coin, and that will be 14 cents. All right, so we can do it. We can make 14 cents using only three and eight cent coins. Right. So let's do our inductive step now.
And I'm going to write this conditional statement out again, just because this is a kind of a new type of problem, maybe it will be helpful. If we can make k sense using only 3 and 8 cent coins for some k greater than or equal to 14, then we can make k plus 1 cents using only 3 and 8 cent coins. And again, we're going to suppose this first part. And we're going to show this last part. So we can write out our inductive hypothesis as suppose we can make k sense using only three and eight cent coins where k is greater than or equal to 14. And we want to show that we can make k plus 1 cents using only 3 and 8 cent coins. So the way we're going to approach this is we're going to start with an unknown amount k sense that we can suppose using our induction hypothesis we know we can make using 3 and 8 cent coins. And then we want to see how we can take that k sense and transform it into k plus 1 sense using only 3 and 8 cent coins. Okay, so we want to show that given k cents made out of 8 and 3 cent coins, we can transform it using only three and eight cent coins. So we're gonna break this into cases. And case one is gonna be that there exists an eight cent coin in our case sense. Okay, so the other case in this example is going to be that there does not an, exist an eight cent coin in our purse, meaning, or in our case sense, meaning that's made up entirely of three cent coins. So these are the two choices. We can either have an eight cent coin or not. Now there's other ways of doing this <clears throat> that are gonna be more difficult. Um, this is gonna be the easiest way to do it and the way to find this is kind of just to play around with it. So here we've got our k sense, and what we want to do is figure out how to transform this to k plus 1 cents. Now remember, we know we have an 8 cent coin. Now because we need at least 14 cents, we know there's going to be some other coins. I don't know what they are. I don't really care. They could be 3 cent coins, they could be 8 cent coins, one or the other. Um, but I don't need to know those. All I need to know is that there exists an eight, eight cent coin. 
Okay, so the question is, is if we had big piles of three and eight cent coins to use, could I somehow transform my k cents into k plus one cents? And if you think about it, we know, we don't know what all is in our k cents, but we know it has an eight cent coin. If we could somehow convert that to nine cents, we would be good to go. So I know I can make nine cents out of three, three cent coins. So what if I trade in my eight cent coin and I replace it with three, three cent coins, like that, plus whatever else I had in the pot. So now I've gone from something, right, something plus eight cents to that same something plus nine cents. So we've gone from k cents to k plus one. So we replace the eight cent coin with three three cent coins to get our k plus one cents. So we saw how case one uh, was that there exists an eight cent coin in our case cents. So case two is gonna be the opposite of that to make sure we cover all of our bases, the negation. In other words, there does not exist an eight cent coin. In our k cents. In other words, our k cents is made up entirely of three cent coins. Okay, so let's draw a picture again. Our K cents only has three cent coins. Well, we know we have to have at least 14 cents. A K has to be greater than or equal to 14 cents. So if we have at least 14 cents and only three cent coins, we have to have at least five three cent coins, right? Because five times three will be 15. Plus we could have others. We don't know how many other three cent coins. So again, we want to think about how can we take this k cents, which is some amount plus 15 cents, and we want to make it so we still have those same other coins. That same amount, but now we need one more cent. So instead of that amount plus 15 cents, we want that amount plus 16 cents. And that will give us our k plus 1. Well, how can we get 16 cents? We can do that with two 8 cent coins. Right? So we know there's f at least five five three cent coins because K has to be greater than or equal to 14. Just because we can't make 14 cents with three cent coins alone doesn't mean we can't make it with three and eight cent coins. And in fact, we showed that in our inductive hypothesis. So what we can do is we want to replace five, actually let's do it like this, five three cent coins 
with two eight cent coins to make k plus one cents from k cents. Okay, so you see how either if we have an eight or if we don't have an eight, we can always transform our k cents into k plus one cents. So, since there are only, only two possible cases done this way, And we know by our inductive hypothesis that we can make k cents. We know how to, we have a rule, right? Case one, if there is an eight cent coin, we replace it with three three cent coins. And if there's not an eight cent coin, we take five of the three cent coins and we replace them with two eight cent coins. So we know we can do this. And in fact, it can be useful to take a look. So we saw at 14 cents, this was 3 plus 3 plus 8, 15 cents. Um, now look, we're in case 1 here because we have this 8. So I'm going to take that 8 and I'm going to replace it with 3 3 cent coins. So we're going to have 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 for, six, for 15 cents. Now notice that now we're in case 2. We only have 3 cent coins. So I'm going to replace them all with two eights, which was case two, to get 16 cents. Now from case, from case, from the number 16, we now have an eight, which means to get to the next number, 17, I can take one of those eights and I can replace it with three threes. That was one too many. Right? And what this is going to give you, if you add that up, is 17. And now, once again, we're in case 1 because we have an 8. So to get to the next one, we're going to take that 8 and we're going to replace it with 3 more 3s. And now we're in case 2, so we have at least 5 3s. So to get 19, I'm going to replace those 5 3s. With an eight, with two eight cent coins, the remaining three, and you see how we can just walk along, and no matter what number we're at, we can come up with the next number um, using only the three and the eight cent coins. Now notice why both the inductive step and the base case are important. If I had changed this and told you you could make at least 13 cents for using only three and eight cent coins, the inductive step would have worked out in exactly the way it did. But you wouldn't have been able to do the base case because you cannot come up with 13 cents using only three and eight cent coins. So we couldn't do that. So the base case would be essential in that situation to demonstrate that 
uh, that that proof wouldn't work. In this case, since we're using 14 cents, it does work. But you always want to, you have to do both parts. It's not sufficient to do either just the inductive step or just the base case. Both parts are required.